Welcome back. Mark Rudolph here. I'm a branding advisor to CEOs and I help them convert their companies from murky to magnetic. But if you want to hire me to make your company more woke, I won't do it. I refuse to participate in it. Hire somebody else. I've also written three books on branding geared to CEOs. The first one is Be Unique or Be Ignored. The second, Brand is Destiny, and my latest, Intra Branding, where I explain how wokeness can kill your brand. Today I'm going to talk to you about your ESG score and your company's brand, and how pursuing a high ESG score will kill your brand. Well, what is an ESG score? Glad you asked. Let's go to the CFA Institute website. E, uh, ESG, not MSG, but ESG, stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. So they're teaching chartered financial analysts, that's what a CFA is, to evaluate companies now based on wokeness. That's right. Now, I've put in red boxes the highlights uh, of each category. Environmental, climate change, and carbon emissions, of course. So if you're going to invest in an oil company, you're going to be getting demerits. The com First of all, the company will get demerits, but if you're an investor in that company, you personally will get demerits, just like living in China, where you get a social score for being a good boy or a good girl. Now, Exxon just added some environmentalists to its board because it wants to appear more woke. Let's go to the second category, social, gender, and diversity. And then finally, in the governance, it's board composition. You know what that means. Do you have enough women? Do you have enough blacks and browns? Do you have enough uh, transgenders? Whatever they say it is, du jour. Lobbying and political contributions. So if you're contributing to Republicans, you're going to get whacked. So this is the ESG score, and of course, it's a, it's a complete bunch of crap. And in fact, Larry Fink, and I'll get into Larry Fink a little bit later, who runs BlackRock, uh, which manages $9 trillion. It's the largest money manager in the world. Larry Fink's been everywhere he can be talking about ESG, talking about zero net emissions, and how that's going to be the future, and that's how we're going to decide which companies get money for loans. But other people have been analyzing it, and it's not working out too well. Why should it? It's a bunch of garbage. Where's all of this coming from? You've heard me talk about it before, but it's the World Economic Forum. Corporate America now reports to the World Economic Forum, which is headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland. The World Economic Forum is the one that developed the slogan, Build Back Better, which is a euphemism for the Great Reset, which is a euphemism for tomorrow your company's going to be a socialist country like Cuba. So this is how the world really works. And if you think it doesn't, you're naive. Now, I've been talking a lot about Marxism, but there's more going on here than just Marxism. You see... These companies that participate in the World Economic Forum are an oligarchy. And an oligarchy is a small group of companies that dictates to the rest of the world. You will buy these products from us, and you will pay these prices. You have no choice. That's an oligarchy. But it's more than that. It's Marxism, too, because they want to control our behavior. They want to control what we think, what we say, and what we do. So if you think in the future you're going to get a loan for a gasoline-driven car, a gasoline-powered car, oh, you're not. Because Bank of America has already said you're not going to get it. That's part of ESG. So I've created a new term, oligarchism, which is a portmanteau of oligarchy and Marxism. So we're not only going to control what you buy and how much you pay, but we're going to control your behavior. Got it? Remember, Mark Benioff, the founder and CEO of Salesforce.com, said that capitalism is dead. 
and in the future, you won't be allowed to own anything. That's behavior. That's where this is coming from. Corporate America now reports to the World Economic Forum. This is very dangerous. Now, I've, because I'm talking a lot about finance, I've updated my panoramic Marxism slide to include financial institutions. You can see it right here on this graphic. So not only are you getting dictated to by schools and corporations and the government and mainstream media and big tech and sports, but it's also coming from your financial institutions. As I said before, corporations are going to be judged on their ESG scores and you will be judged on your ESG score because if you have a portfolio of oil stocks and cars that come from manufacturers that don't make electric cars, you personally are going to get a low score and that's going to affect maybe whether you can get a mortgage or whether you can get a job. That's what's really happening. Wake up. As I said before, here's Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock, largest money manager in the world. And according to Larry Fink, uh, BlackRock will vote against management and board directors whose companies are not making sufficient progress on sustainability-related disclosures and the business practices and plans underlying them. This sounds like a dictatorship, doesn't it? That's because it is. Now, they if you read a lot about ESG, you wonder, why is this happening? What's the rationale for it? Well, of course, it's a power game. These people love power. I don't know how they grew up, but something's wrong. People who crave power are kind of sick. They claim, though, that their rationale is they want to serve the snowflake millennials and Gen Zers. They don't put it that way. It's an irrational strategy. You can see this bubble-wrapped kid. That's the way kids are being raised. In bubble wrap, wearing helmets, and with fragile stickers all over them. That's how they are. They cry at, they, they cry at the drop of a hat. Well, you might be at fault. Maybe you raised your kid this way. But here's the result. So the rationale here is we want to serve these, these guys. Now, if, you're, if your customers are all bubble-wrapped babies and your employees are all bubble-wrapped babies, what could possibly go wrong? I think you know the answer. All right. So what happened recently? CPAC, which is the Conservative Political Action Conference, just took place in Orlando, Florida. Trump was the keynote speaker. It was wildly successful. Of course, the left ESG woke mob complained that Hyatt could possibly host Republicans, conservatives. Of course, these people are Nazis. How could you do it? Well, after the conference ended, Hyatt said, we were proud to host these people. They were very patriotic, very well behaved. And we're so glad we had them. A day later, one day later, Hyatt came out and said, we're, 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 we're disgraced. We're sorry that we hosted these people because they had Nazi symbolism on their stage. So you see, we have this symbol, which is called a, a rune on the... Uh, Nazi officer's collar. Well, that was borrowed from the Vikings. Now, you see the stage below. They think it looks like this symbol. And, of course, you know, Republicans sat around in a room and said, hmm, how can we piss off half of America and make them attack us? Let's design our stage like a Nazi symbol. This is insane. Nobody thought of things like this. There are woke people who are looking and looking and looking for anything they can find to hurt people, hurt companies, hurt causes that are not theirs. So when Hyatt came out the next day to condemn the people they had just praised, 
They offended all of them. And do you think that conservatives are going to go to Hyatt next year? No, they're not. So let's look at this. You know, the swastika itself comes from Hinduism. It's a sign of spirituality. The Nazis borrowed a lot of symbols. So, you know, I looked it up on Amazon. Here's a Viking Norse rune pendant. Same symbol. You can get it right now on Amazon. That's how crazy these people are. But this is part of the woke mob that is dominating the landscape. And it goes into now how your company is evaluated in the financial world. Because if you're associated with the wrong people, you're going to be excommunicated. And if the rest of us don't stand up to this, we're going to lose. Look, let's look at what happened to Amazon recently. Amazon came out with a new symbol for its app, the one on the left. Well, the same woke mob said, that looks like Hitler's mustache. You better get rid of it. So without blinking an eye, Amazon switched to the one on the right. Really? I never would have even noticed that. I'll bet you wouldn't have either. And I'm sure you've heard about Dr. Seuss canceling itself. Dr. Seuss Enterprises announced that it will take six books off the shelves, out of circulation. And these are the six books here. I have them pictured here. And then Universal Orlando, which has some rides and attractions at its theme park in Orlando, they said they're now going to rethink whether they should have anything Dr. Seuss down there. You see how it snowballs out of control? Well, just a few years ago, Michelle Obama, during National Read the Kids Week, and I, this is National Read the Kids Week, she was reading Dr. Seuss. Is she a racist too? That's how insane this is. But if conservatives just sit there with their hands folded, doing nothing about it, it's going to get worse and worse. Now, where is all of this leading? What's it going to do to your company? Well, I'll tell you what it's going to do to your company. You're a doormat. Your company is a doormat, an ESG doormat. And here's the effect. If you just let the woke mob dictate to you what you can and can't do, what you can and can't say, then branding is dead, your company is dead, and you might as well just hang it up. Because either the CEO is in control or the mob is in control. It can't be both. And the mob is both inside your company and outside your company. You have to decide. This is Mark Rudov, branding advisor to CEOs. You, hire me only if you want to fight the mob and if you want to convert your company from murky to magnetic. I'm at markrudov.com. See you next time.